man stands in an airport terminal. The board above him flickers with the word, delayed. He sighs. He's been here for hours. Hundreds of people wait, restless, trapped in the long choreography of travel. Now imagine. He blinks. And in the next instant, he's home. No airplane. No boarding pass. No waiting, just gone and somewhere else, arrived. This is the world we imagine when we ask one of science fiction's oldest questions. What if teleportation was possible? It sounds like magic. A fantasy born from dreams of convenience and power. But beneath the wonder lies a darker question. What does it really mean to move something or someone instantly across space? What price would we pay for perfection? To understand, we must begin with what teleportation truly is. At its simplest, teleportation is the transfer of matter, or more accurately, of information, from one place to another without crossing the space in between. In fiction, it's a shimmer of light, a hum, a step into nothingness. In reality, it's something else entirely. In the quantum world, teleportation already exists. Scientists have teleported particles, photons, atoms from one location to another, not by moving the matter itself, but by transmitting the information that defines it, the quantum state, the exact blueprint of what that particle is. When that information is transferred and the original particle destroyed, an identical particle emerges somewhere else, perfectly cloned, that's not travel, that's reconstruction. And if you apply that concept to humans, the implications are staggering. Teleportation, in its purest theoretical form, would require mapping every atom, every molecule, every electrical impulse in the human brain, then transmitting that data, an astronomical amount, across space, and reassembling it somewhere else. But here lies the paradox. If the teleportation process destroys the original body, what arrives on the other side, is it you? Or is it a copy? A reconstruction that only thinks it's you? The philosophical weight of that question is enormous, because if consciousness is continuity, if your awareness depends on an unbroken thread of being, then teleportation may not move you at all. It may only end you, and start something new. The dream of instant travel now feels less like liberation, and more like an execution. Still, humanity would chase it. Imagine the first experiments. Laboratories hidden behind layers of security. Scientists arguing in whispers about ethics, about identity, about danger. They'd begin with small things. An electron, a photon, a molecule. Then perhaps a living cell. Each time the pattern is the same. The original is disassembled. The data, streams of quantum code, is sent. At the destination, the object appears. Identical. Flawless. At first, people would celebrate. The birth of a new era. The end of distance. The death of delay. But as the technology scales, so too do the consequences. Teleportation on a human level would demand technology beyond anything we currently possess. The amount of data in a human body, some 1045 bits, would dwarf the capacity of all the world's computers combined. Even if we could record it, transmitting it would take immense power. And reconstruction would require not just energy, but precision. A single misplaced atom could mean failure or death, so scientists might cheat. They might not transmit every detail, only enough to simulate a body that behaves close enough. But then what are you? Still human or an approximation of one? Now imagine the moment the first person steps into the chamber. The hum of machinery. The rising static in the air. A blinding flash. And silence. A second later across the world another chamber lights up. The same person steps out, smiling, speaking, breathing, but something in their eyes is off they remember their past, their name, their life. But perhaps in the quiet moments, something feels different, a discontinuity, like a film reel that skipped a frame. Is that awareness or illusion? Ethics would fracture societies. Religious leaders would declare teleportation an abomination, a violation of the soul. Others would see it as transcendence, the evolution of humanity beyond biology. Governments would weaponize it. Armies that could appear anywhere instantly. Borders meaningless. Surveillance absolute economies would shift overnight. Transport industries collapse. Airlines, shipping, even space travel obsolete. Cities could sprawl freely. People could live anywhere, work anywhere. But that freedom carries a shadow if a copy can be made once. It can be made again. What stops someone from duplicating you? 
From copying your consciousness a thousand times, enslaving your mind in machines, simulations, or soldiers, identity itself becomes currency and weapon. Imagine walking down a street and seeing yourself. Another version. Same memories. Same emotions. Who has the right to exist? Who is real? Philosophers once said that technology advances faster than morality. Teleportation would be the proof. Let's compare this to history, to the inventions that reshaped civilization. When electricity was tamed, it illuminated the world, but also powered the electric chair. When nuclear energy was discovered, it promised infinite power, but birthed annihilation. When the internet arrived, it connected billions, but fractured truth itself. Every leap forward carries a shadow teleportation would be no different. Now imagine the first global teleportation, network massive hubs, fortresses of data and energy scattered across continents, each one capable of disassembling and reconstructing human life in seconds. At first, access would be limited. Governments, the wealthy, those who could afford the unimaginable cost of instantaneous existence. But soon it spreads. Everyone wants it. The technology cheapens, the process becomes routine. Teleportation booths replace airports. Commutes become instantaneous and yet something intangible is lost. Travel once carried meaning. The distance between places shaped our sense of the world. Journeys defined us. They gave time for thought, reflection, change. Now we appear and disappear without transition. Space collapses into a single point. The world feels smaller, but so do we. Then, the first failure. A transmission error. A corrupted pattern. Someone steps into the chamber and what steps out the other side isn't them. Not fully. A mind fragmented. A body incomplete. Suddenly the illusion of perfection shatters. The public recoils. Governments scramble to regulate. Scientists warn that no system is infallible. That even the slightest quantum interference could twist results in unpredictable ways. But the genie is out of the bottle. Humanity has tasted omnipresence. It will not turn back. Corporations begin to compete for control of teleportation infrastructure. Whoever owns the network owns movement itself. They can monitor where you go, when, and why. They can decide who is allowed to exist on the other side. Teleportation becomes not just transportation, but filtration. A new kind of border, a gatekeeping of existence, and the technology keeps evolving. Soon, teleportation merges with artificial intelligence, with memory transfer, with cloning. People no longer need to move their physical forms at all. They can transmit only their consciousness, inhabiting synthetic bodies or digital environments. The line between travel and immortality begins to blur. Because if your consciousness can be copied, stored, transmitted, can death be defeated? Some would argue yes. Others would say that immortality without continuity is just replication, a cold imitation of life. Yet for a species obsessed with survival, even the illusion of eternity would be irresistible. Humanity would scatter itself across planets, data streams, machines. The physical world becomes optional. But what happens when too many copies exist? When the human identity splinters into millions of versions all claiming to be the original? Conflict would follow, not with weapons but with reality itself. Which version of history is true when everyone remembers it differently? Which version of humanity defines the species? At its core, teleportation challenges not just physics, but philosophy, religion, ethics, and meaning. It asks the ultimate question, are we the sum of our parts, or the continuity between them? If we can be copied perfectly, then what makes us human? Let's step back for a moment. To the scientific roots. Quantum teleportation relies on entanglement, a phenomenon where two particles become linked so that their states are mirrored, no matter the distance. Change one and the other reacts instantly. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. It's real. It's measurable. And it works. But scaling it up to macroscopic objects, to humans, is a challenge that defies imagination. Entangling a billion trillion atoms, maintaining coherence across distance, and reconstructing matter with atomic precision, it's beyond any technology we can currently conceive. Yet that has never stopped us before. What once seemed impossible, flight, space travel splitting the atom, became reality through persistence and curiosity. Teleportation could follow the same path. 
and if it does, the fabric of civilization will change forever. Time zones become irrelevant, geography meaningless. Nations lose power when distance disappears. Cities might dissolve as people spread evenly across the globe. Populations redistribute in real time. Overcrowding could end overnight, but so could privacy. Because every teleportation requires scanning the human body at the most intimate level, recording the total pattern of who we are. That data could be stored, analyzed, weaponized, your body, your mind, your memories, all archived forever. A world without secrets. Perhaps the greatest danger wouldn't be the physics of teleportation, but the control over its systems. In the wrong hands, teleportation could erase enemies silently. A person could step into a booth and never reappear. Deleted FIFE.